to today's lesson. Um, today I thought I'd focus on a lesson basically for the parents. Um, now, if you are a pupil or, or a child, you definitely can have a look at this as well. But it's something that I always recommended to um, the parents of the pupils in my classes. Um, I taught for over 10 years, obviously in Northern Ireland, as you can hear, um, and I currently uh, lecture um, to educational professionals and student teachers as well on a variety of things, including things um, like we're about to look at today. Um, and one of the things I advocated over and over again to the mums and dads in the classes and the grands and grandmas and aunties and uncles is reading. Um, and reading is, as you are obviously well aware, um, probably the most important thing you can do as a child to develop your brain activity and just general intelligence and things like vocabulary and on this channel there's you know plenty of videos on um things like practice papers and english literacy skills and the thing about comprehension so when it comes to practice papers is a great deal of those questions involve vocabulary and vocabulary is just something you can build up through reading so reading is obviously absolutely crucial Reading can be a bit of a mystery because some people don't like it, some people do like it, even the ones that do, how do you promote sort of what you would call better reading, um, you know, to get the most out of those reading sessions. Because yes, you can read and build vocabulary, but actually you can do so much more. So when I was a teacher, I used a resource, uh, and the resource I'm going to link below, I'm going to source where, where it came from, um, I've re-edited it slightly for, for myself, um, it's free, it's a completely free resource, but I used it all of the time for every reading lesson I ever did and reading session that we ever covered we used this and it's called the reading skills step ladder the actual um resource is actually uh there's lots of different versions of it this is the version I use because I like the colors of it so I'm going to move out of the way so you can see it hopefully you can hear me as well so um it splits it up into five different skills okay so um, we've got level one, two, three, four, and five. And these are your, your skills, your levels that you're going to have um, as a reader. And this goes all the way down from, from, from foundation stage, that would be nursery, all the way up to P7, possibly even further than that at the end of key stage two. Um, so we've got different levels, one to five, and we've split it up into different categories. And what I'm going to do is just read the categories with you, explain how it works, and I'm going to link this obviously in the description below, and then show you a few examples of how that works. So it's a nice short little video, but I think it's really, really useful. So we've got, uh, this is phonemic, I would say phonetic is the better way to put that. It may be an American thing, I'm not quite sure, but phonetic word, it's the awareness of phonics. So that's breaking it down into how words are made, you know, how the sounds are made. So that's going right down probably to a very basic level of understanding of words. And we'll cover that in a minute. Phonics themselves, I'm sure you have a pupil going through P1, 2, 3, they will be very familiar with phonics, but going through phonics themselves, how words are made, how they're made up, how they sound them out, things like that. Possibly even how those words, what they mean and meanings and things like that. Fluency. So it was a very clear jump, I think. This is your sort of basic building blocks of learning to read, and there's a jump to fluency. So when you are listening to your child read, if they are at a point where they're just still trying to break down those words, you know, the cat went outside, the uh, uh, cat uh, at, uh, uh, went outside, what you're then looking for is that fluency. Your next jump is going to be the fluency, how you read, independent reading, inflection, self-correction, things like that. So again, we'll cover that. Um, you then move on to listening comprehension. This is where the big sort of, I suppose, flag for me is in terms of practice papers and moving on to that sort of stage with comprehension. So now, the secret here is you don't actually need to be even looking at practice papers and things like that to do comprehension. You can do oral comprehension. And what I always advocated to my parents uh, in, in the classes um, that I taught was to do oral comprehension. Listen to your pupil read, listen to your child read, sorry, and ask some questions. Even if it's informal, even if it's a conversational uh, manner, ask some questions because that's crucial because that will feed into what eventually becomes reading comprehension what they will do in class so they get a comprehension you'll get one every week in the school uh, possibly more than once a week in, in your classes from p4 onwards and you read the question you then read the passage you find the information in the passage through something called scanning and then you answer the question that's the that's the the the, the, proce the procedure you go through every single time um, and the better you are that will generally tie to how much you read 
in all honesty, um, how good you are at finding that information, whether you understand the vocabulary and things like that. And speaking of vocabulary, the very last thing is vocabulary. That's the highest level skill, believe it or not, knowing words and what they mean, which sounds is very similar to the very first one, but it's a, a whole different stage, obviously. So even just to pick a few, and we'll come in much more detail in a minute, but using vocabulary, speaking right, context clues is massive, we'll come to that. Uh, you know, classifying vocabulary, using names, describing, things like that. Now, you'll notice these colours, and hopefully you've noticed um, the, the colours here for our different levels. Um, the, these are a basic step ladder, and they will obviously go up. You can see this is sort of your basic stuff moving on to be able to eventually pull words out of a passage and understand what they mean in context. But there's also different levels, and in fact, there are different levels of skill. So although this phonetic awareness, or understanding how words are broken down, is a very basic skill, there's actually a level three skill in here, and that level three skill is deletion, addition, and substitution. So that's being able to take out parts of a word, or even parts of a sentence or words, and replace them with other words. So that's a mid-level skill to be able to take a sentence and take a word out of it, and try and replace it with a different word or even take a letter out of a word and put it in there but we're still in the building block to find words are made but that's something you can use yourself um we go down here we've got level two we've got four level two skills blending and segmenting again we're talking about building up how to read and that basic building blocks of how to do that uh, beginning middle and ending signs so you're doing for cat cat at you're going for your cat at your uh, ph phonetical sounds your phonemes um, onset and rhyme, syllables. Now, syllables done, even in nursery school syllables is being done. You know, how do you cover syllables? We do things like charades, things like that. That's what we would have done, obviously, higher up in the school, but that can be done down the school as well. Um, and then level one, so your most basic skill, so words in a sentence and rhyming. So rhyming words, cat rhymes, so hat rhymes, so bat rhymes, so mat rhymes, so sat. Um, now, even level one skills, if we look across, there's actually level one skills in lots of different, um, I suppose you call columns. Um, phonics, there's blending, letter sound linking, letter sounds and letter names. So again, we're still here on the breaking down. Let's actually grab these. So this would be our, this is our basic. We'll call it basic because it's the first step to reading, okay? We've then got our fluency. I would say this is our own little, this is our next step. And then we've got listening and reading comprehension. We're talking about our comprehension skills. First of all, it's listening comprehension. And we've read tidy here. And we've got our own little, which is our neck, our, our top, top, top of vocabulary. Um, but we've got level one skills in here. Obviously, we've got, we're building the words up because it's a very basic skill. But even things like that, predicting, okay? So predicting is a level one skill, but it's something you could do in listening comprehension, in oral comprehension. So your pupil, or your, I keep saying your pupil, it's a force of habit, sorry. Your child reads a, a, a page and you say to them, what do you think is going to happen next? All right, what do you think is going to happen next? Um, and that gets them thinking. They have to use the information in the passage. Now you obviously will understand, you hopefully have heard them read the page, if they just make it up off the top of their head, you will also get them to really think. You may get them to go back and look at what's happened on that page so far. So that's using things like context clues. Context clues are whenever someone has read a piece of a passage and they're using the information in that passage to say how either someone's feeling or find more information about the passage. So in this case, predicting what's going to happen next. And that is a level four skill and it's right up at the top. So these all blend and mesh together, but it's really a really, really useful guide to get you questions and get you thinking about the sort of things you can ask your people why they're reading or after they've read. Um, so even a level one skill, which is naming pictures and objects, a basic skill, but it's right at the top. Because vocabulary, it's naming that picture. What is that called? That is called a car. That's called a, you know, a wardrobe or whatever it happens to be. But that can be really crucial when it comes to doing that vocabulary skills or using those vocabulary skills in a comprehension or even just an activity or even daily life. Um, well, level two then, as I say, we've already covered these. We've got some of these here, building the building blocks of our, of our reading skills. Using punctuation, it's your grammar, it's your punctuation skills, spag as it's called some in some countries. 
um, spelling and grammar, but it's obviously huge. And it's not necessarily what we're talking about today, but that can be a really important thing. And certainly in the context of doing comprehensions, um, they'll always be broken down into a section on narrative and questions. Uh, it may not be narrative, maybe uh, uh, fact or fiction, or even the newspaper cutting or something like that, but there'll always be some questions where you have to do comprehension, and then there'll be grammar or spelling and grammar or punctuation. So it is important to know those. Um, the main sort of area level two hits, believe it or not, is here. So listening, comprehension, connecting to life, really important. Can you connect what's happening in that story to what's happening to you? A good thing I ask there is, how would that make you feel? So you're putting yourself in their shoes. Now, that is something called inference, which actually is the highest level skill. You're still collecting it to real life. You're still saying, what would it make you feel? What, what, if you were in that situation, what would happen? Or has that happened in life? So maybe there's a, uh, a game of football, you're reading a little story in football, there's a penalty. Have you ever seen a penalty be missed? Oh, I have in that match I watched last week or dad watched last week or mom watched last week. And um, so there's connecting that to real life. So it helps with that inference, which we'll come to, is that might always pull on a lot because I think it's something that's actually people are very good at if they're encouraged to do it. So to infer is to put yourself in someone else's shoes. So you know, I'll use the analogy again of I hit a penalty. So the boy's about to hit a penalty and he's sweaty and he and his heart's beating in the story, and you stop them, you say, What's happening there? Oh, his heart. Why is that? Why is his heart beating? Has your heart ever beat or started to beat a lot? So you're connecting it to real life or to level two skill. Or it has. When did that happen? Connecting it to life. Okay. Um, what do you think is going to happen next? So we're using predictions. We're using these listening comprehension skills. Um, where is he again? Is, is this the end of the match? The start of the match? Answering who, what, where questions. So we're pulling those things. So there's a level two and level one so far questions. It's very basic. How would you feel if you were in this position right up to level five skill? And that's massive. And that's the sort of question they'll be asked in a comprehension. How do you think John's feeling? And it won't obviously explicitly say John is feeling sad. You'll have to use your imagination to put yourself in, that, in his position and use context clues. So, you know, he's sweating. Why is he sweating? Maybe he's played football, so he's tired. Could be that. His heart beating. Why is his heart beating? Could be because he's tired. Could be because he's tired, but it could also could be because he's nervous. So it's using those things, connecting things to real life, using that experience. Um, but that's a massive thing. What about level three? We've got quite a few things here. We've talked about deletion and addition, you know, inflection, inflectional ending, easy for me to say. Um, but that's obviously how you read. So if you're reading a story to them and you finish off with certain inflections, it can, you know, it can indicate what type of sense it is. Is it a sad story? Is it a happy story? Is it funny? Is it not funny? Things like that. Uh, plurals, compound words, the basic building blocks here. Then you move on to your next step, your fluency. And this is where whenever you're reading, you want to encourage this. When you're starting to build up that fluency, and it's the it's what I would have done most as a P5 teacher for the context of be eight-year-olds. Um, because an awful lot of them would be uh, very, very good readers, and some of them would have been. Uh, just start starting that journey of, of reading. So self-correction, that's really important. You read a word and often you'll hear a teacher or a parent do it for them. So they will say, um, you know, the cat went to, and it says in the, they'll say to. They'll say, oh, it's, it's the. They go, oh, okay. And that's good because they're picking up saying, hold on, what is that word? So ask them, try and give them the opportunity to self-correct because of that mid-level skill and something they could eventually start doing. Then when they come back and that path, the, the word they will probably appear again, they can hopefully remember it and they will start self-correcting. So give them that opportunity to do that. Um, expression obviously is massive and that's something you look for as look out for as a teacher and should be looking for as a parent. If you can read with expression, you're essentially reading that passage with full context. If you read uh, you know, the one word at a time, so you read at a one word level, it, it indicates that your level is coming, you're still in this sort of area, you're still basically building up, you're not quite moving into the next step because you're you are in the word you haven't reached that level where it's fluent and it's trying to encourage that so what you want to do is give small small sentences get them to read it until they can read each word even if they have to memorize each word and then give them that opportunity to be fluent so read the word the cat went to the door or the cat ran away from the dog or the dog scared the cat so they didn't say that the dog scared the cat 
and getting a couple of times say can you read that with expression so the dog's scared what's the what's the adjective what's the verb there get them to to really uh, enunciate that if they can it's a long process it's not something that happens overnight it takes a year probably more and by p5 np some haven't got it some have got it but it's something you want to encourage them to do and it's a sign to look out for as well so once they're once they're reading with expression they're ready to move on they're ready for comprehensions and things like that because uh, <clears throat> things like phrasing and things like that if we move on to listening comprehension nothing in this category in terms of level three but reading comprehension which is something that you, you know, your, your practice papers your gl papers your bond language papers things like that drawing conclusions reading the passage what is that passage about a very common aq gl practice paper question is um you know what why did the author write this or where's this from is it from a magazine is it from a storybook is it from whatever and that's using the context and using you know all the stuff they've read and draw conclusions how do you think someone felt or it's a happy story is it a sad story would it be for children or for the adults things like that uh, sequencing massive okay what happened first what happened last they do this right the way down um in you know obviously primary school and foundation stage but break it down to even it comes to the sense of you give them five and three things what happened in the story? They read the story, they read the chapter, said about three things, put them in order one, two, and three. Football match, um, there was a foul, there was a penalty kick, there was a goal, mix them up. Which what happened first? There was a foul first, then there was a penalty kick, then there was a goal. So the retelling those events. That doesn't need to be done with paper. As much as you possibly can, try and do this orally. And um, if your pupil isn't a isn't big on English and doesn't love it, and that was these are the, the pupils that I would focus on a lot that didn't love reading. Um, I worked in an all boys school for 10 years, particularly boys. Some boys absolutely adore reading, an awful lot of boys didn't. Um, and that's what, those are the ones I would always have focused on with these, this sort of thing. Do it orally, do it informally, make it conversational, make it quick, make it easy, make it consistent. So do it every day, every single session, but quick and easy. Shouldn't take you much longer than just reading it usually. Um, as a parent, I think that's a really, really useful thing to do. Uh, so. Uh, sequencing, verifying predictions, so as in confirming you were right, that's a good thing, don't forget to do. So tell them what's going to happen next, this is going to happen next, and then when it happens, say, were you right, were you wrong, why were you wrong, or what was different from your guess, so going back. Um, and an awful lot of parents worry, and they think that, oh, if I'm interjecting every single time and breaking up this flow, am I going to break up that flow? And the answer is no, you're not, because you're building up those skills, and those skills will help them be a better reader. They really shouldn't be moving on to this stage unless they have fluency. So if they've got the fluency, then this is fine. You can interrupt all the time because they should be able to jump in and out of those little sessions or those reading new sections. Um, character settings, events, who's that character? What is the setting? What's happening? You know, you're busy retelling and giving more information on what's going on. Um, so moving on, to uh, well, sorry, before I finish actually, uh, some more level three compound words. You know, we've got compound words uh snowman two words put together to make a new word uh classifying vocabulary as in is it a noun a verb an adjective things like that that's a good comprehension skill in itself and something that comes up a lot in the paper where it will say uh these words are written usually it's adverbs generally but these words are written in a passage slowly quickly fast scarily um tell me what kind of words they are and you have to find them in the passage use the context okay context clues um of actually what it is and say this is an adverb by using what it says so it's describing a verb so it's an adverb or it's 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 a personal place or thing so it's a noun and again it links to things like you know understanding uh the, the types of words and things like that but it's something to use um level four then Heading up to the highest level skills here, and we have things like our context clues, which we'll come back to. But even in phonics, there's multisyllabic words and prefixes and base words, which you people may not know what they are. You may not say, What's a prefix or a base word? Well, I probably know what a prefix is because we do you, you, you do cover those, but base words are even multisyllabic, but they will be able to read. Reading words of multiple syllables, okay? Abacus, three syllables there. Um, and again, that can be done with games, with just talking to them or picking stuff out. Um, fluency, a lot of that comes with, you know, your reading skills, so the appropriate rate, again, that's a, a huge sort of uh, thing to, to, to focus on. Sometimes whenever pupils are very good at reading or distinguishing one word at a time and they get very good at it, they can 
barrel through and ignore things like full stops, like commas, and it's trying to slow them down because when they go quickly, they tend not to pick up context and meaning or actually read the sentence because they're good readers, but they're good at reading one word at a time. So they might read, the dog went to the shop and he went and he had a good time. What happened in that sentence? I don't know. Because they haven't really read it. They've just read one word at that time, but they're very quick at doing it. So you have to stop them and that's why questions are important. So you can go back and say, tell me actually what happened in that sentence. Uh, inflection, which is huge, okay? So inflection, and that comes with drama. If you can encourage drama and in a classroom as a teacher or even at home, um, acting out certain things, it's brilliant because they're actually using the voices to express how the character feels. And they do that through the words that are written. So I can read that word, that read is, how dare you take my pen. So it's how dare you take my pen. So it's, it, it's, it's amdram, it's that sort of stuff, but it's really good because they're picking that up. And I know that that's going to take a bit more time, but it's something you could do um, if you wanted to and pick up a bit more sort of inflection ideas and, and experience of doing that. But I would highly recommend that we do that an awful lot. Um, Moving on then, uh, we'll go to reading comprehension. Again, this is practice paper stuff, so comprehension activities, character traits, hard to do in a passage, but you can do it in a book. Summarizing, tell me overall what happened, cause and effect, something happened, what was the result of that? It's a very, very good thing to focus on. Facts and opinions, it's a massive thing. What is the fact? What is an opinion? Main idea and details. So what was the purpose of this passage? And that fact and opinion thing is actually great. You know, tell me one fact about this. Tell me one thing that happened that's definitely a fact. Tell me what you think of this or what someone else might think of or someone's opinion story. That's a massive thing. And something that I always used to encourage people to think about a lot in my class whenever I I had a class of my own. The big thing I talked about was facts and opinions. You know, when we're d d diffusing arguments and, and dis disagreements, you know, he doesn't like this. He said they're wicked. He's allowed to say that. Oh, he's allowed to say it. Why is he allowed to say it? Because it's his opinion. He's entitled to his opinion. Um, but it's not a fact. And it's distinguishing those two things. And certainly the pupils uh, that I taught really appreciate that. They were able to then draw a line uh, in their heads. That, that, well, that was their opinion. They're allowed it. doesn't make it a fact, though. It's just an opinion I have my own. Um, and then moving on to things like, as I say, context clue. So using what it says in the sentence to form an opinion or form an idea of what the answer could be to a question or what, you know, what summarising or how someone feels and things like that. You have things like Latin and Greek root words, which is in there, but really you're not going to do too much on that, let's be honest. Antonyms, synonyms, so opposites, uh, words that mean the same, but uh are are different words okay uh, and synonyms as well antonyms as well words that mean the opposite but uh, are different words things like that using words that say the same thing okay bread and bread two different words mean very different things um things like that c and c is a very common one and then level five you've no level five in the first bit because level five is your top top high tier level skills and um, you'd be talking into cases too getting ready for practice paper time uh gl all that sort of stuff but there's no reason why you can't pepper some of those ideas and for younger pupils as well. Um, but we're mostly into the reading comprehension and the vocabulary. So homophones and homographs, which I'm sure you're familiar with, um, using new vocabulary they've picked up to speak and to write, so taking the words that they've used and using them in conversation or even using them in your actual writing of your stories. Um, many schools I've worked in use word of the day or word of the week. It's a very common thing, which is brilliant because I encourage not only for you to pick up a new word, but also to use that word in the correct context a little bit. Um, reading comprehension, inference I mentioned is the highest level skill and it's so, so useful. Putting yourself in someone else's position. Um, conclusions and generalizations. So forming a conclusion based on what you've written. Um, I think it's, well, I don't think I know, it's a fantastic resource. It's something I use an awful lot as a teacher and I've encouraged you to do the same. I'm gonna show you a very quick uh, page um, from a book and I'm gonna give you an example of how I would do this if I was reading. So just before we finish, um, we'll pull this up here. And uh, we're gonna read the one page, okay, from Mog. Um, and I'll just make it a bit bigger so you can see it. There we go. And I'm going to read this now. And I'm going to just think about those different things. And we're not going to pick any, each individual one because this is a very basic book. So we aren't going to, you know, going to, be to cover everything. And, and that's a very important point. Don't try and cover everything. All the skills on one page. Your child will be exhausted. 
um, and will start to not want to read. So you pepper, I just gave you a brief guide of how to do this. So um, we're out here. Mog ran out of the room and right through the house and out of her cat flap. She was very sad. The garden was dark, the house was dark too. Mog sat in the dark and thought dark thoughts. She thought, nobody likes me, they've all gone to bed, there's no one to let me in and they haven't given me any supper. Now if I was doing that book with my class, I'd focus on a couple of things. So I'd make sure when they were reading, they were, inf they were given inflections, they were actually reading it properly so, and they weren't reading too quickly or too slowly. So Mog ran out of the room and right through the house and out of her cat flap. Why is she ran out of the room? Remember, we've just read the previous page. Why is she ran out of her room? So they're gonna tell me. So they're recalling, which is from the previous part, what's actually happened. So they're giving me some information. Why, why does she run out of the room? Can you tell me why she ran out of the room? Because they chased her out. I can't remember why, but they chased her out. Um, uh, what happened before they chased her out? So you're again, you're, you're putting things into an order and you're retelling the story almost. You don't have to do it for every page, but it's nice to stop and summarize. It's a high level skill. She was very sad, very sad. So that very was a good word to use and to hone in on a lot, you know, words we were trying to describe, adverbs essentially, um, to focus on our very, she was very sad. Um, the garden was dark, the house was dark too. Mog sat in the dark and thought dark thoughts. So I could ask, what is a dark thought? I mean, how can a thought be dark? And you're getting them to think about that sort of thing. So how could a thought be dark? Look at her face. If you picture a book, you can focus on that. What's her face? Does she look happy? Does she look sad? You're picking that up. How do you think she's feeling? There's your inference, high level skill, right at top level five. How is she feeling? How would you feel if you've been chased out of the house? Oh, I feel really sad. Has, you, if you ever, has anyone ever ran away or left the house for a reason? Or do you have a pet? Why well, I've got a cat, I've got a dog, I've got a rabbit. And has it ever looked sad? Has it ever had to run away? Has mum and dad ever shouted at it? Connecting to real life events. We're pulling those things in and that's building up a broader picture for our story. Uh, she thought, nobody likes me. They've all gone to bed. Have you ever thought, nobody likes me? Everyone's gone to bed or, you know, uh, no one likes me. I bet you have. There's PDMU coming in or PSHA if you're living in England. Um, that is a massively important thing to focus on. Pulling in different from life events, pulling in your ideas. There's no one to let me in and they haven't even given me my supper. And you can really induce inflection there because if you do that as an adult or as a reader, they will start to do it. Kids emulate, kids copy, but they will do it an awful lot. What do you think is going to happen next? I'm going to predict, you know, um, if, if it happened right before, obviously, uh, and you're building things. There's a small, small snippet of an example of things I could use for that. Um, I will put this... Uh, resource in the description link to it in the description it's fantastic i also put the link to the actual resource it is free but it wasn't made by me it was made by someone else and I, I can't remember who it is but i'll put the link to that resource well if you want to go on and, and and download it as well or you could just use the one i've edited they're both free um but they're really really useful i would encourage you to to use that um but good luck any questions you leave in the comment thanks very much bye now